Today's show posting is sponsored in part by patrons BLEV, Bo, Beefcake, Boxy, Bradley Taylor, Kobe Rush, Crow T Robot, Emperor Tromadlob Drolmai, Karma 5003, Felin, Silky Wilkie, Talamar Von Geist, and last but not least, Troper's 10 Different Identities. Thank you all very much, and enjoy the show. So Secret Control, for those of you who don't know, Cardor makes every everything swing against somebody that's not you and drains life when these attacking creatures die. But I do want us to be so for real. This is a control deck. All right, so 15 card draw spells. I like that. This is all highly responsible. Tarkir block. <laughs> this is honestly good. This is a good politics piece. Hey, you want you want some free combat triggers? Stigma balls is always reasonable. This counts as ramp right. Yeah, sure. I also, I like Savarok's Tome introducing the initiative for no god reason other than to complicate things. That's real and based of you. Blink engine, so we have nine things. Myriad, yes, that's blink. <laughs> Making multiple copies that we sacrifice, yes, that is blink. Okay, actual blink, fake blink. The Argussi. All right, so we're doing we're doing red copy blink. That's how we're making this happen here. Oh, f they removed Cardor. Give me back my fucking closet. Yeah, we we desperately need. We either need Conjurer's closet or the Argussi. Why do you hate the closet? Do you hate gay people? I would firmly stand by you saying that anybody attempting to remove your closet is committing a hate crime. So turn four. I'll swing Boomer Scrapper and let's, for the purposes of being fair, let's assume that we have to virtue of persistence to make this guy not die so that we can make another junk. So this is on an adventure next turn. We have a protection spell. We're gonna sack the junk. Wallahi, we are saved. <laughs> All right, Conjurer's Closet, it's fucking time. So now we play our commander. We counterspell the counterspell because we're fucking chads. We go to our end step, we blink, re-getting the ETB effect we already secured. Now we play this, now we're sick as fuck, right? We have a way to get either our commander or the closet back. We have virtue of persistence mana. This is hot, you are going to hell. You are going to prison, uh, and we're putting you on a list as a registered stacks offender. Today's video is also sponsored by Boot.dev, a better way to learn coding. They've gamified the learning process with quests and achievements to level you up as you complete self-paced challenges from day one. But don't confuse these elements of instant gratification for easy progression. These are serious, comprehensive courses, with the game elements being used as a tool to keep you motivated and interested. Over 300,000 students have already used Boot.dev to learn back-end development skills, but if you're rightfully trepidatious about yet another online course provider, Boot.dev not only offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, but they also provide all of the content on their site free for read-only accounts. They are committed to their value add, aka the stuff they charge you for, being their hands-on coding examples, learning assistance, and gamified learning model. To see for yourself, click the link in the description box and use code MALDHOUND for 25% off your first month or even your first year if you purchase an annual plan. And we need a hungry fat dragon. Oh my god, is this Thember Chad? Give it to me. It's Thember Chad. I'm so fing happy. The Boston Tea Party. <laughs> more land hate, more land hate. Honestly, the non basic lands have it coming. It is hilarious that the Land Destroyer is playing a ramp deck because this deck looks like, okay, I ramp into casting Themberchod and winning the game. I think we need to do something other than play land. This is f***ing a landfall red deck. Oh my god. <laughs> Wake of Destruction is so toxic. Destroy a land and all other lands with the same name is uh, truly, truly awful of you. This deck, both playtests we did, was four turns of land pass before we started to play setup pieces. And then at that point, we begin to wind up a big cartoon fist. And then on like turn eight or nine, we, we begin to swing it. And without our setup pieces, this is 
land pass for six turns and then we do a soft board wipe after seven turns and i think that is relatively silly and so i think you would be better off with more damage doublers than more mountain effects. Like you have Themberchad who cares about how many mountains you have. I think that's probably enough in terms of if you want the deck to be functional. Don't drop any of the land hate, keep all the land hate. You've got a lot of stuff that wants you to have a lot of mountains and best case scenario, you have as many mountains as turns it is and you are, it is more imposing to lay down additional damage doubler for Themberchad than it is to say, ha ha, I spitting earth to deal eight to your commander. But I think the core gimmick is f all these loser ass posers who keep playing with leaves and water and the power of the sun instead of the power of rock and stone, brother. And that's what we need to do. I'm gonna say who hurt you, dog, for this. But the thing is, we know, and I respect it, but this is absolutely, what did they do to you that this is the deck that came out of it? I love Thraxamundar. This is my goat. He needs a lot of help. 6-6, six, six, whenever he attacks, somebody sacrifices a creature. When they sacrifice a creature, you get counters on Thraxamundar. The good old no reason combo. Ain't no god way we put Commander Sphere under draw. This isn't cool anymore, now we're in school. We have blue, right? We all see everybody look at the island and then point and laugh. The fact that we only have one instance of this sacrifice a creature draw cards effect is fucking criminal. When you force your card draw to be conditional, what you are saying is effectively I can only draw cards when things are going well. And typically, the only times you really want to draw cards in a commander game is because things aren't going well or you're an Izzet. I get the Shadows of the Past is generic value. I think, I think legitimately all of the value that this card has would be replaced with one little, the weird goth child, because it also, Cards like Deadly Dispute get you to Thraxamundar mana, mana faster. But if you want to drop Thraxamundar fast, hit fast, hit hard, the way to drop him fast is probably Treasure Generation. Strike it rich works for you. And then what I would do is I would have more things recur directly to the field. And so once we get Thraxamundar out one time, it's okay if we don't have the lands to ramp back into him to recast him from the command zone because we are never ever recasting him from the command zone. We are doing exactly what Darebrain suggested as well. Like this is a dark ritual treasure generation you just, on like turn four, you just want to count to seven once and then get him down. Unexpected Windfall is one of the things I'm getting to because you're not just going to have Dark Ritual. You want big score, you want Unexpected Windfall, and then that's going to continue filling your graveyard for things to reanimate with. Particularly strong, but if people let you get away with this, two treasure tokens per combat damage and one evasive creature repays for Thrax immediately. Dude, everybody sleeps, everybody sleeps on Beamtown Beatstick. This card is crazy. As someone who plays it, I'm saying not particularly strong because I am accounting for how my table reacts to it. Every table I've ever laid this down at has shot it in the face because its upside is so high. I think a lot of this card draw is legitimately crazy. I, I think your entire card draw section, even though it says 12, is fundamentally smoking crack. If you want to do a Thrax Daddy deck, I would cut a lot of this gen broad zombie support and I would add in big score, all those rituals, all that treasure generation, and I would keep the multi-sack so that you can build Thraxamundar out. And then I would also add in for this recursion, instead of this like, oh, I'm gonna cast from the graveyard like a good boy, we are hitting them with that weekend at Bernie's dog, my friend. Mono red artifact deck I built with a strict $50 limit. There is no fast mana, and the most expensive card is the commander itself. $27. Your Chiscoria. Yeah, Doretti, we out here. Make treasures. Yeah, we out here making artifacts to give 
inhumanly chunky artifacts affinity and then cast them for free. Honestly, this looks like the type of budget deck that clowns on somebody's $2,000 high power deck. Nobody graveyard cheats like red when it comes to random pieces of shiny trash. We're doing all this on three god lands. Holy God, I believe in the deck. And I'll tell you what, for good measure, let's just assume they kill him. Let's just assume that he's 11 mana now. And then in main phase two, we'll play this and this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down from eight. So he's four mana, which we cast with our land. So we just replay him. We don't care about anything. This deck kicks. This is exactly what a budget deck should be. It picked the very specific gimmick, play a lot of artifacts and have some big hits sprinkled in there. And it gets to work. The only thing I would recommend because you have so much cheat my artifacts out of the graveyard, I would say even more of these. You could certainly do some extra combat, shit, but I do think we want as many things as possible to be artifacts. So we already have like Faithless Salvaging, Faithless Looting, Trash for Treasure, Seize the Spoils. Uh, but I think that there's no reason to leave Cathartic Reunion out of the party because I do think the weakness that I saw that a lot of casual decks have uh, is that it spent the first like four turns hanging out and trying to get things going and you do not have many good options for chump blockers or like things you want to throw down in front of people to make sure they don't kill you and if you're gonna do that boy fucking howdy do we really need to make sure that your commander's game plan is going off reliably uh, you could do ember cleave it would be a great artifact it is a relatively expensive card but would still fall within the 50 dollar budget I mean, this smacks. This is this is the Bolshevik uprising in a deck. No questions asked. Remember, everybody, stay toxic.